Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, this channel is all about my journey throughout CRNA school. So today's video is going to be comparing the anesthesia roles. It's going to be between anesthesiologists, CRNAs, and anesthesiologist assistants. So if you guys are interested, let's get into the nitty gritty. So first I want to cover how to become an anesthesiologist. So anesthesiologists start off doing their undergraduate degree in pretty much anything they choose. Um, more than likely they'll be doing a pre-med track. Uh, you can get a bachelor's degree in biology, chemistry, pretty much anything as long as you get the core sciences that are uh, required for most schools. Um, you know, at least the ones that are on the prerequisite list if you're going to do a, a bachelor's degree outside of um, the sciences uh, just to make sure that you cover those bases. So you just have to get a four-year undergraduate degree before you can apply to med school and then in med school um, you're going to have another four years there and in order to get into medical school you have to do the MCAT. So um, then once you're in medical school, you have your four years and then you'll have one year in um, an internship and then three years in a residency. So it's a long process. The total time is about 12 years, four years of undergrad, four years of med school, and then four years of residency in order to become an anesthesiologist. Um, their salaries are looking like 310 to 520 K per year. That's based on what I looked up online. Um, and then as far as the role they perform, it's similar to that of CRNAs and AAs, but they are usually the ones that oversee the cases, especially in an anesthesia care team model. Um, you know, an, an anesthesiologist would be the ones in charge and then you'll have the CRNAs or the AAs that are working kind of like delegated under um, an anesthesiologist. So their roles are a little more limited in, in terms of what can be performed, unless you're working in a CRNA independent practice, that's different. But right now what I'm talking about is anesthesiologists and their roles. It's pretty much just administering anesthesia, um, you know, intubating, general anesthesia, regional anesthesia, all kinds of things like that. Now, going into anesthesiologist assistants, this is actually a fairly new role. It came about in the 1960s due to a shortage of anesthesiologists. And um, there's really only a, a select number of schools, I believe, based on my research, there's only about 13 schools in the US. And pretty much it's a similar track as far as um, the anesthesiologists, but once you get past the four year undergraduate degree, you're gonna take the GRE instead of the MCAT in order to do a master's. As far as I know, I don't believe there's anything higher than a master's for the AA programs. Um, it's usually between 24 to 28 months. And um, yes, yeah, so it's about four years of undergraduate and then two years more of the anesthesiolo anesthesiologist assistant programs. So that's about six years total. And the salary looks about 138K to 209K per year. Um, and the only issue with, with anesthesiologist assistants is that they cannot practice in every state in the United States. Um, from what I looked at, it looks like there's only about 18 states that they can work for um, anesthesiologists. Um, in the United States and they, they do have to work under an anesthesiologist. There is no such thing as anesthesiologist assistant only practices. Okay, and then now I'm getting to CRNAs. I don't want to seem biased. I just feel like I know a lot more about it because I am actually in the field and in the process of becoming a CRNA, but I'm trying my best to just, you know, not put any bias toward it. I will give you my opinion as to why I chose this role versus the others, but We'll get there in a second. Okay, so let's go into CRNAs. So CRNAs, you start off with a bachelor's degree in nursing. It's a four-year degree. Then you need at least one year in an ICU setting, and then you can apply to um, CRNA school. You need to take the GRE, very similar to that of the anesthesiologist assistant program. The only difference now is that as of 2022, all programs have transitioned to doctorate. So you'll be doing a 36-month program, um, so about three years. So that totals out to four years of your undergraduate it one year minimum of uh, ICU experience and then a three year program. So about eight years total, but that could be more. And then as far as salaries, it's about 180K to 230. I do have a CRNA salary video. Um, I'll link it somewhere in this video um, talking about the top 10 CRNA salaries in the United States and the bottom three as well. Um, if you'd like, you can go check that out. The good part about CRNA is that you can work independently. So you don't need to be working under an anesthesiologist and I believe in that instance you'd be able to make a little bit more money. Another benefit versus AAs is that
that there are more schools available. So if you're struggling to get accepted into an anesthesiologist assistant program, it could be that there really aren't that many schools available. I don't know the exact class size, but I do believe the curriculum is very similar as it is. You're going to be learning all there is to know about anesthesia enough that you could be working at the same level, um, CRNAs versus AAs. So, you know, it just depends. There aren't as many um, schools available for anesthesiologist assistants and also the limited amount of states that you can work in. That being said, I hope this helped you understand the difference, the differences in their roles. So as, as you heard from what I mentioned about the anesthesiologist, they have a lot more years of experience. Um, so they are, you know, the gold standard when it comes to anesthesia. I'm not saying that AAs or CRNAs are less than individuals, but if you're, if we're looking at true stats, you know, they have a lot more years of experience in and learning in the field. So they obviously have a one up over a CRNA or an AA, um, which is why they usually work, you know, in the anesthesia care team model as the lead and then the CRNAs or the AAs work under them. Comparing the three professions, uh, in order to get from start to finish, anesthesiologist is 12 years, AAs is six years, and um, CRNAs is eight years. Okay, now let me get into why I chose CRNA over the other anesthesia professions. So I do have a bachelor's degree in biology and I could have um, applied to an anesthesiologist assistant program and I probably could have been practicing long ago um, because I finished my bachelor's in 2012 and if I would have applied to one of those programs I could have been practicing uh, well over seven years now or more. The only issue is that my GPA was very terrible when I did my undergraduate degree. In fact, I tried applying to a dental school and that well, not eight. I applied to several dental schools for two years and that was uh, a no-go, but it was mostly just to say that I did it because I didn't want to have finished the four-year degree and not apply. Um, I don't know why. I just felt like, you know, if there was a chance that I did get accepted for whatever reason, at least I tried. I don't know. Um, but my GPA was really, really low. It was a 2.7 and I just figured, you know what, there's no school that's going to take me, so I'm not going to apply to an anesthesiologist assistant program and why don't I try to get into an entry level um, nursing school just like starting over. So I actually got an associates of science in nursing even though I already had a bachelor's degree but I did a program that it was um, because you have a bachelor's degree it's accelerated. Um, so it just for, for me I just felt like I needed a fresh start I just didn't feel like I had any confidence in myself um, you know if I would have just gone from a bachelor's to a master's that would have been more streamlined but you know based on my history I just didn't have the confidence to do that um, so I started out with an associates in nursing obtained my bachelor's in nursing online um, meanwhile I was working then I was able to transfer to an intensive care setting I was there for three years and I finally got accepted into CRNA school now that being said I feel like I gained a lot of confidence because I was able to work in like a clinical setting I felt I feel like you know because of my five years of nursing before I started uh, CRNA school that it helped me in a sense just feel more familiar with the hospital because you know, with the AA route, you do your four years of undergrad and then you do your two years of anesthesia, the anesthesiologist assistant program, but you don't really actually work in the clinical setting. I believe you do need a certain number of shadowing hours before you can apply to AA school, but as far as how the hospitals work or anything like that, I was really unfamiliar with it at the time. Um, so I just felt like I wasn't going to be comfortable doing that. I did want, I always wanted to work, you know, once I decided that dentistry wasn't for me, I wanted to do nursing and I wanted to spe like specifically do nurse anesthesia um, because I just wanted to have, you know, more autonomy and, you know, just be a, be a, a provider. Um, so I appreciate the time that I put in, even though it was in essence, a waste because you know there is a more streamlined approach if I could make the same salary more or less as an AA versus a CRNA why wouldn't I do this route is that I just felt like I needed more time and I needed to gain that confidence you know I was able to get a much higher uh, GPA in my bachelor's degree for nursing so that actually helped me get into um, CRNA school so I don't regret any of the things that happened I do wish it would have happened sooner versus later but everything happens for a reason and I'm happy where I'm at right now. Um, granted, I am a little bit older, um, but I do feel like I'm at a place right now that I just feel like it is the right time. 
Um, so yeah, I don't know if I'm just trying to justify how things work, but that's the reason why I took the route that I took. I, I just love the fact that I could fall back on nursing, you know, as my, as my career, you know, like when, if, you know, the, if it all boils down and I don't pass my CRNA boards, God forbid, I don't, I fail out of CRNA school, I still have that nursing degree that nobody could take away from me because I worked hard for it and it's, it's always going to be there and I can always work in nursing no matter where I go. So I appreciate that degree and I don't regret it whatsoever. That's pretty much all I have to say for this video, guys. I hope you liked it. Give it a thumbs up. If not, I'll catch you in my next video. Bye.